It's the Morgan Evans More or Less Pickleball podcast coming at you in three, two, one, boom. My guest today is a rising star in the game bursting on the scene with such intensity that I swear I can hear ACDC's thunderstruck every time she walks on the court. She is beauty and the beast. Please welcome the one and only Callie Smith. Callie, good to have you on the show. Good to be on it. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, no worries. You're a hot property these days, you know, up and coming. A couple of great results recently. How are you feeling about your game? I'm feeling really good, actually. I feel really solid. Excellent. So recently you've had a couple of bronze medal performances, one with Irina, one with Michelle. What was it like with Michelle? I've never played a tournament with her, but she's so much fun. She is really fun. Fun isn't enough. She's very energetic and I love it. (laughs) (laughs) So she has fun out there and that's what I love in a partner is got to be able to have fun, but you also need to be able to work hard and she's willing to do both. And I've actually really enjoyed playing with her. Nice. Are you two planning to team up again? Got a couple of tournaments. We're playing the PPA Vegas tournament together. It's really fun. We've got Hawaii coming up together. Uh, maybe a couple Ooh. more PPAs. We'll see. Haven't decided quite yet. Beautiful. Well, I'm sure those will be a stunning success. Now, you grew up in a, uh, a large family, six kids. It kind of reminds me a little bit of the Newman family. And one thing I think you guys have in common is the competitiveness. Do you think that kind of stems from competing so much with siblings for you know, food and attention? <laughs> Absolutely. When you were born, I was bigger than my twin sister. And so I was, it's kind of been the joke that I enjoyed food more and stole the food. But then I came out <laughs> with bruises. So she was like the more feisty one. So and it's kind of been the same like all the way through our lives. <laughs> So I'm still the food person, love eating food. It's like my favorite thing ever. And she's still more feisty, if oh, you can believe it. More feisty than you. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. All right. Well, where is she? How come she's not playing pickleball? You guys won uh, the Utah State together. Yeah. So we played tennis together. Our freshman year, we both went to BYU. And then I transferred to my whole family plays tennis. So I can, we're like a tennis family. It was very competitive there. But then once I got into pickleball, I was like trying to convert them all. and they kind of had my view on it at first that it's kind of a joke or an old person sport or <laughs> it's a waste of time like a better workout playing <laughs> tennis like any anyways any excuse in the book not to play and now now that they see it can be competitive my twin sister name's kelsey she actually kind of wants to pursue it a little more but she's like got a two-year-old now and she goes dang it she said i just wish I would have gotten into it when you did, and now it's kind of too late right now. I'm like, no, it's not. I'm like, you can still play. Yeah. <laughs> a little, little tougher with kids. I can imagine. I often see you at a tournament with kids in tow. That seems to work out. Do you take some motivation, some uh, inspiration from the kids watching mama out there doing her thing? I do, actually. In fact, my mom actually asked me, she said, doesn't it stress you out when you're playing? I'm like, actually, it doesn't, because I trust my husband to watch him. He's really good with the kids. And... I actually love it. If I hear their little voices or see them, we're like, good job, mom. It's just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it like melts my heart. It like calms me down. I'm like, okay, I can do this. I got this. They're like my little supporters, my little crowd. I think it'll all go swimmingly well until the day comes where you hear that little voice saying, mom, I think you were in the kitchen. In which case, yes, we'll need to put them in the car. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but no. for now it works out. <laughs> For now, it works out. So in reading about how you got started with pickleball, it's kind of a common story in terms of people generally underestimate how difficult doubles is. You've come from a fantastic tennis background, and it's a bit of a misconception for a lot of elite level tennis players just to assume that they can come in and rule the roost singles or doubles. But you had a bit of a tough go against some elderly ladies in a park. Did you ever get revenge? Uh, we have actually since then, <laughs> me and my husband, I guess we shouldn't say against them, but we have seen them play and we're just like, oh my gosh, this is where we were. We've improved a lot. And here's where we are now. And they're the ones who got us into it. And we actually went up and told them, you guys are our inspiration by killing us. <laughs> oh, that's so <laughs> we made nice. us want to be better and improve because yeah, you're exactly right. We just thought, uh, nail them. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll never forget those losses, but they as you said, inspired you to become who you are now. 
Now, you're getting started with the Pickleball Academy. How long has that been in the works and when do you think you'll break ground, so to speak? So I got started in the last year. I've had a lot of people asking me. So I've, I've, well, I've taught tennis since I was like 15 years old. So I've been teaching tennis for um, over 15 years now and love it. And with pickleball, I was like, oh, do you ever teach pickleball? I'm like, well, I want to play it. It's more just for fun. But I'm like, well, why not spread the love and share it? So I started to teach pickleball and it's kind of grown like wildfire. And now I have more lessons than I can count and not enough time to do it all. And so I'm like, well, so I started hosting some clinics um, and they got filled. I mean, I'd put them up at night thinking, I mean, take a week or so to get filled and they'd be filled that night. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, there's just such wow. a need for lessons and people are wanting to take them and, and get better. It's just like, I wanted to get better and I'm more than happy to do it and love it. Uh, it's just, how am I going to do all this all the time? And so I started talking to my husband, Kyle, about it and say, hey, like, what if we started like a little academy? Plus here in Utah, it gets really cold in the wintertime. So there's no real, really to play except for rec centers. And those are full all the time anyways. So I thought if we could just do like an indoor facility somewhere and just do that all year and be able to run programs through it, junior programs, adult programs, maybe some leagues, maybe open play. Anyways, just kind of started brainstorming and saw it was do an academy so we're kind of it's in the works at the moment we're still figuring out our plan we're looking at places to rent right now and then maybe in the future to build so we'll see that's awesome that's so good it is one of the few sports that is just such an addiction that none of these people who take lessons from you really have a choice anymore they're going to keep coming back for lessons and they're going to find themselves playing every day so you just got to let me know if you need an assistant coach up there I will. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I will. So if you're open to it every once in a while. I'll I accept you. food stamps, uh, peanuts, <laughs> <Perfect>. general food stuff. <laughs> Brilliant. Wow, that was a good interview. This whole podcast was a ruse, really. It was just a job interview. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you knew it. Wow, very clever. So Kyle plays as well? He does. So he started playing. I mean, he, we, we've kind of picked it up together, but then he kind of holds support down and lets me do my thing now. <laughs> Wow. I do love a good role reversal. Very nice. Yeah. He's amazing. I couldn't do it without him. He's the real hero in my family. He's standing next to you, isn't he? he, he he's he really can not. Hear what you're saying. I, sh- I should have had him next to me. <laughs> Get some brownie points. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. I, well, with any luck, he'll listen to it. <laughs> now, I've played against you a couple of times, two or three maybe. And from the get-go, the one thing I noticed was the sheer level of footwork. There are split steps, there's happy feet, and then there's Cali feet. I don't, uh, <laughs> I'm so curious if you can maintain that level of intensity through the whole day. And, and how do you do it? I can, believe it or not. I always move my feet a lot in tennis, maybe more than I needed to. Just help me focus and get in position for all the shots and carried over to pickleball but because it's such a smaller court it's I guess a little easier to maintain it I mean it's longer playing time so the matches aren't over the whole course of the day you know by the end of the day I'm tired but I feel like I'm in pretty good shape to maintain it I have figured out some easier ways to move than just sidestep sidestep I kind of do more of a crossover step now and trying to find easier ways to get there instead of it's kind of a a learning curve that often takes players a, a long time to figure out how pickleball efficiency works compared to tennis. It's, it's not quite the same thing. So if you've already figured out the virtue of the cross step, especially on that forehand side, which is usually pretty foreign for a good level tennis player to cross over so heavily, but sometimes it's needed, isn't it? Yes. When I would play, <laughs> I'm playing against you guys, I'm like, how can you guys don't move? <laughs> Like, how do you get in position? You just stand there and you're fine. Like, I can't do that. So I had to I still use my Cali feet. <laughs> it's a new version. It's good. I found when you were opposite me and I was thinking, okay, now's a good time. The ball's on my forehand. I'll attack down the line. That Cali feet got you either just back off the line enough or out of the way of the ball enough to get you enough room around the ball to make me pay for it. And it was, I don't want to say embarrassing, but it was kind of embarrassing how quickly the ball was coming back at me. And I vowed then to basically just try and keep myself cross court from you. (laughs) Let the girls fight it out. Come on. (laughs) I love it. Didn't know at the time that you felt that way. I just, I just knew I really wanted to win. 
<laughs> well, I saw that too. I was like, gosh, she really wants this. And you know what? She wants this more than me. Let's let's just give it to her. Come on. No, um, but my partner never had agreed with that. So, But it was a good kind of eye-opening thing for me to see just how your type of footwork, because it is a type of footwork in that there are a lot of people out there that essentially keep a, a wide stance and don't do a whole lot. They tend to want to keep their balance, but are looking to utilize um, possibly a, a less conventional grip and to expand their sort of comfort zone around their body with that grip versus yourself. I'm in the same boat in terms of grip. We're basically using a continental for dinks and reflex volleys. Do you ever change grips or are you continental most of the time? Uh, I use continental most of the time. I do change grips on my drive. So if I drive or serve, it's a different grip. I use more of a semi-Western kind of from tennis. Okay. And then the drops and dinks and then volleys and overheads, all that continental. Have you found it tricky to teach people the virtue of changing grips throughout the game? Through tennis, I feel like grips are super important. You have to do it in order to hit the shot the best way possible. But in pickleball, I've seen so many different grips and different styles work. It's like I've adapted my teaching style to work with what someone's more comfortable with. Good, good. Well, then this academy of ours is going to be great. <laughs> but I do think there are better ways to do something and more effective ways to do something. And I'll share that opinion with them. But I leave it up to them if they want to, because it's their game, right? For sure. And as long as people like Jeff Warnick and Brian Ashworth and various people out there who are able to succeed and win at the pro level with some pretty odd looking grips. I mean, I hear Jeff has never actually hit a backhand. Everything's a forehand. So his paddles last twice as long as everyone else's paddles. <laughs> he's just that windshield wiper. I don't know how he does that, but it works. It's so frustrating it's for him to be six foot seven or something with that kind of grip. Jeez. <laughs> it's not fun. But yeah. then you've got you. The other side of the coin is moving laterally so quickly that you get the ball in your comfort zone with that. For me, I think as a long-term solution, that's it. If you can stay in shape and your energy levels can support that kind of activity, then all power to you. <laughs> for, for now, it works. So maybe down the road, <laughs> I'll have to adapt. But that's what I love about the game. Is you can always find something better to do. You can always learn from it. And have you already started teaching the kids the frantic split steps? I have. <laughs> Really? Seriously? I have, for real, yeah. My, oh, uh, my four-year-old so actually cool. is pretty good. She hit 12 balls in a row back and forth with me the other day. Oh, I was loving that's it. that's adorable. You've got to put that on your Callie Joe Pickleball Facebook site. I do, I need to. Everyone will love that. That'd be great. Okay, we're going to pause it just briefly there with Callie for another edition of What Makes Them Great, brought to you by Coach Me Pickleball. Footwork is a broad topic and one that interests me very much. I've seen the highest level of men's and women's professional doubles in both tennis and pickleball for many years now, but I don't know if I've ever seen a quicker first step than what Callie possesses. She puts raw, unbridled energy into every component of her movement, but it all starts off with the split step. You may have indeed heard that term before, but perhaps never truly appreciated until you experience the benefits. Performing a split step is as simple and as difficult as creating a wide base and pushing up off the ground, typically at the moment just before your opponent is contacting the ball. In the moment that Callie performs the split step, even if it's not the entire foot that leaves the ground, she's effectively unweighting herself, so that when she lands, there is both balance and momentum. That momentum back down to the earth is what helps propel her in any direction, usually to whack a volley winner. I imagine that before Callie was a great tennis player and an even greater pickleball player, she was probably All-American at hopscotch. Best split step in the game for my money. Okay, let's get back over to Callie for some more insight into her game and what might help you win a couple more matches. Now, onto the two-handed backhand. Controversial topic here, two-handed backhands. You often put it to good use. For all the players out there that are kind of aspiring to just improve, but possibly get to the pro level, do you have any kind of advice on when you think the two-hander is appropriate and not so much? So I started out with a one-hand. So I didn't feel like the grip was long enough. I played tennis with a two-handed backhand. But you have the one-handed slice and one-handed volley, so I just I was fine hitting a one-hand. I thought, gosh, I just feel like I'm just missing out on power or strength with my one hand, just with ground strokes and drives, 
So I need to figure out how to do it with my two hands because that's what I'm used to. And so I just, if I overlap my hands a little bit, I found that I could still do my two-handed backhand. And so I'll kind of switch between the two, but I just feel like I have a better, for some reason, a better reaction time when I'm up to the non volleys online or in baseline. So I'll still switch between the two. So I love my two-handed now. You feel you've got faster hands with your two-hander. I do. And maybe oh, it's because I, for my ready position, I have two hands on my paddle. So it's just a quick, just okay. like switch my grip and or break my wrist and hit it. Interesting. Because I know from tennis, I used to have a two-hander as well. And it was the left hand, the, the top hand that was the dominant kind of hand running the show. The right hand was a bit more along from the right. And I'd spend a lot of time hitting left-handed forehands to kind of keep that in place. Is that ever something you think about or are they just a united team? No, I hit it more with my left hand for sure. The right hand just gives it a little stability, but it's, yeah, my left hand more comes over the top of the ball. It's kind of muscle memory now, but for those just starting up, yeah, it's the left hand comes through. Lovely. Well, I think our listeners have learned a lot today. Get that left hand going. <laughs> yeah. So how can people find you if uh, people want to come and take a lesson or just pat you on the back, get an autograph, something like that? What's the best way for people to get in touch? Probably my Facebook, Callie Joe Smith Pickleball page. Message me. It's probably the best way. And you're up in Orem, Utah. Where is Orem? I'm not sure if I've been there. It's about 45 minutes south of Salt Lake. Oh, okay. It's not too far away. Maybe I'll come up and take a lesson. Or you can just come play. (laughs) 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 I can probably take a lesson from you, to be honest. I'll trade you your uh, your footwork for, I don't know, some kind of sneaky deception thing that I try to pull off. Ooh, let me hear a little more about (laughs) this one. Well, Callie, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you taking a moment out of your busy tournament and child raising schedule to talk to us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Hopefully we'll do it again soon. Oh, we're playing a tournament coming up. We've got uh, the Los Angeles Open. Yep. Would you say it's too soon to start matching outfits? Uh, I'm joking, don't if, worry. if you want to match outfits, I'm totally, I know I'm not against it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't think I've ever done it, but it's, you know, it's weirdly happened like five or six times where it hasn't been discussed, but I've ended up wearing the exact same color top as my mixed partner. <laughs> I know it's so strange. I'm uh, excited to play with you though. Oh, good. Me too. All right, Kelly. Well, take care of yourself. Stay safe and we'll see you on the pickleball court soon. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Thanks so much. All right. Take care. Me too. Cheers. This podcast was powered by Selkirk. This podcast is also brought to you by the next generation of Selkirk Paddle, the Vanguard. Thanks for tuning in, guys and girls. Once again, this is Morgan Evans, and this has been More or Less Pickleball. Come down to the desert. I hear it's nice, like, eight months of the year.